Great morning world. This is your boy Dragon and I am back from France. I've got my make sense glasses on for ultimate clarity and I am excited to be back with another 10 minute rise up with Dragon. So I want to welcome everybody to the playing field of your consciousness. This podcast's intention is to remove the blindfolds from your program mind so that you can gain access to higher levels of consciousness that already exist and tap into your true great potential. How do we do this? We do this with our 10 minute straight to the punch deep thought podcast format, which you are listening to right now. Our weekly blog called The Dragon's Lair, sign up for it, one from the vault, and our upcoming online courses and books. I want to welcome everybody to another edition of Rise Up with Dragon. Great morning, world. Welcome to the Rise Up with Dragon podcast with your host, Dragon. What's up, family? Um, As a reminder, you know, one of our greatest goals in life is to bypass our analytical mind, you know, our programmed analytical mind that has been calling the shots and calling those shots based on somebody else programming it. So one of the easiest ways, the most efficient ways of bypassing your analytical mind is through the practice of meditation. So we are always very, very excited to say that the Rise Up a Dragon podcast is sponsored by none other than Karma Mind. Get into the float state with Karma Mind Meditations and Gear. Yes, and that is the sweet angelic voice of my wife, the chicken. Very excited that she's coming home. So today's episode is called The Butterfly Effect. And a lot of you think that you know what that is, as I do. <clears throat> but on this show, we're always open um, to the potential for further levels of greatness. And I want to just share with you first how I was motivated to think about this topic and and come up with it as I get back into my structure. So I call this dragon thoughts. So these are thoughts that I'm receiving on some level and I write them down. And what I find, and this is the journaling process that I teach people, and that's coming up in my book, um, I find that that triggers in a butterfly effect kind of a way, it triggers a thought that ends up becoming a rise up. And you know, one one thing that's interesting about um, being back in the saddle and doing this, and you'll learn more about this um, when my book comes out, but you know, the, the reason why I do these lives or the origin of the Rise Up the Dragon show comes from a place of struggling dramatically, intensely with um, anxiety. And the anxiety came from speaking live in front of other people. And it's interesting. I mean, it's I wouldn't say it's easy, but it's easier. But it's interesting to think about how easy it is to write. I know a lot of people don't do it. It's very, very easy to write your thoughts, way more uncomfortable and challenging to speak them out, especially live. The reason why, and I just co-authored a book, um, and I spoke about this idea of streaming your podcast live. The reason why I do this is because I'm scared of it, and it totally freaks me out. So... um, this is personal growth live in action. So here's some thoughts that that motivated. So the, the question that I asked, and I don't know where I heard this from, but I definitely didn't come up with it my, on my own. But the question is, were you made for other things? You, were you made for other things? Or were you made to do what you were told to do and what everyone else does, aka the herd? Do you follow the herd? So today's podcast, the topic was motivated by the consideration Just opening up, this is an open concept, the consideration of letting our unique and crazy ideas that are in our head out, putting them on paper, speaking them out, sharing them with others, and thus triggering a sequence or a butterfly effect, a cascading ripple effect um, of events and those events therefore leading to this unique footprint um, that you call reality, this unique footprint on the planet. So... Let's get into the butterfly effect, and I've got some cool examples um, of it. So the first thing that I was thinking about in the realm of the butterfly effect is what is called a turning point. 
So, you know, when you just think about the idea of a turning point, it's pretty cool. So a turning point is a key event and crossroad. Think about that. A key event and a crossroad in our past and present lives where our perceptions and responses swing things either to the right or the left. <sighs> That's big time. You know, one of the things that I always challenge people to do to live uncomfortably where the growth, growth takes place is to take a left instead of a right. You know, so a turning point, you know, has to do with our perceptions and our responses, which have the idea of or have the impact of swinging things to the right or left and therefore triggering outcomes. This is only something that you can see in your past and you can actively look at it in your present. But when you're looking at turning points, you're looking at your past. Um, and then when those things are connected, when those outcomes are connected, they create what you currently know and call your reality. I just love that. So in my book research that I've been doing on consciousness and human behavior, I'm specifically interested in the area of our unconscious programming. Talk about that a lot. That has us perceiving. So remember, we've been programmed by our mother, father, teacher, preacher, and that has us perceiving, believing, and responding to the people and events um, that have created what we, you know, to brought us to this present moment. So idea of looking at turning points and, and the butterfly effect is something we can start doing right now just by becoming conscious of it. But if you look at your current reality right now, it's a manifestation of all of these turning, um, of the power of the butterfly effect, but all these turning points that have happened in your life, which by the way, when you enter the field of conscious um, awareness of all of your memories, which come from your past, you can actually look at them differently. And I teach people how to do this in my book, look at them differently, therefore creating a shift in what you'd now perceive as reality. I told you it's deep thoughts. So I'm fascinated how all of these events that we can go back and retrace in our memories. What's interesting about these events is they actually don't make sense um, in their overall power and purpose at the time that they're happening or when you just look at them until, and this is the whole concept that I go over in my book, until they are connected as part of, you know, the idea of connecting the dots as part of the butterfly effect of all the events that came before them and created your reality. So what does that mean? Is if you, you know, we're very focused on where we want to go and when we look back at a past event, like say a traumatic event, we think that that event, this is, this is how you move from something happening to you to for you. If you're only looking at that event, you're going to struggle with understanding its value. Because you can look at any event, no matter how good or bad it was, and answer the question, how did it serve you? But when you look at all the events, when you draw lines and you connect the dots, just like somebody does on an investigative criminal board or what they call a crazy wall to catch a killer or to catch a criminal, they connect all the dots. You know, you could meet somebody today and not think that they have an impact until you connect the dots of who you've met because of them. This is super fascinating stuff. So naturally, the events that transpire after some of these things are what you know, create your, your present. And that's the butterfly effect. So in evaluating what can be done to claim control, so this is the big, this is the, the big takeaway of this, of this episode. If you understand and become aware and embrace this idea of the butterfly effect, what do you do with it now? Right? Because very often we have to let go of the past, let go of the future, live present and, and, you know, move into the fast lane in our unique way. But what is it that we actually have control of in this sequence to impact or create an, a better end result, which is what we all want. So it's plain to see that our control in the butterfly effect, it does not lie in the events that happen. We don't control the events that happen. This is why the bumper sticker, the most famous bumper sticker ever is shit happens, right? We don't, we don't control the events as much as our perceptions of them and how we respond to them. This is the whole idea of my interface response system is to create a more efficient and effective response to these events because we can't control the events. We can control our perception and our response. So this will help us create a more efficient system of perceiving, believing, which is what you're going to do, and responding in support of your desired future state. So that's the key is you got to know where you're going and why you want to go there. And then in the space between, you know, 
in the eye of the storm, as I, as I write about, um, there lies your win. That's where the win is, in the space between the stimulus, the, the event that you can't control, and your, and your response, which is being controlled. Your knee-jerk response, remember, is always controlled by your program. So you got to slow that process down, and I teach people how to do that. So that's where your win lies. So are you aware that your current reality is the outcome of many life events and your decisions and responses to them? So they are turning points. There's that turning point. So those things were and are turning points of your life. Recognizing this increases the value of taking your time and assessing and observing and processing some of these turning point opportunities from this day forward. It increases the value, um, and working on a better uh, uh, the value of working on a better system of creating perceptions, and you know responses that are in support of where you want to go. So here are a couple examples of this that I'll just pop out, and I found this in my research. So um, the internet really interesting because now we're moving into Web three. So the internet. Do you ever go up and research how the internet started? So I believe let me get the dates right. Um, in 1957, the internet was really triggered by the Russians um, being the first to put a functional um, satellite into space called Sputnik in 1957. And the reason why that triggered the internet is because when the U.S. saw that happen, at that moment, they started to lose the uh, race to space. And they didn't like that. It's a pissing contest, you know, all, all of this government stuff, which creates war as well. So what the government did right away is they, they full gear went after this thing that you guys know as NASA, but they also started something called um, ARPA, A-R-P-A, which stands for the Advanced Research Projects Agency. So just think about this. Sputnik went up, butterfly effect. And there's all things that happened before that. So ARPA agency, um, Advanced Research Projects Agency, um, which was motivated in the advancement of communication for our military and network of communication. So as you know, that went on to become the internet. And then in 1991, a guy named Tim Berners-Lee um, launched something that you guys call the World Wide Web, right? And then naturally, this was all for military, not for you. So naturally, we caught on because of our desire to uh, advance in communication, and we created all these this awesome stuff. So this internet and Web3, as you know it, would not have happened if our country was not in a pissing contest and in the race for space with Russia. Interesting, right? Um, here's another one going over a little bit over uh, 10 minutes today. So Genghis Khan, we, I don't know how much you know about Genghis Khan, but Genghis Khan was one of the most powerful, influential people in the world. He, he, he actually almost took over the entire world. But what's interesting about Genghis Khan is before he even had one soldier in his army, Genghis Khan's whole war path began, butterfly effect. You know, so this, this could be you, right? Genghis Khan's whole war path began when a small army of rival soldiers that were pissed off at him because of what his father did. They came after him to seek revenge on what his father did. And what they ended up doing was kidnapping the love of his wife, his wife. So unbelievable what happened after that. He started his whole army for one reason, to get revenge against them and to rescue his wife. What did that lead to? 10 million square miles of conquered lands. Over 20 million people died because those dudes took his wife. <laughs> so butterfly effect. All of that anger and revenge. So do you ever get angry and seek revenge? Well, be careful, right? That could amount to 20 million people dying if you follow through. You see, following through can create like a shit storm for the world or it could create something amazing. So following through is best served when it's in support of something positive. Um, just quickly, Darwin, this is a cool story, butterfly effect as well, because you know, you guys are out there trying to move forward and struggling and, and you know, which is all the recipe for success. The number one ingredient for success is failure and letdown, right? So the next time you guys experience letdown, understand the butterfly effect. So Charles Darwin, who was gaining popularity in some of his theories, um, 
he made an attempt to board this exploratory ship that was called the Beagle. And the reason why he wanted to get on this boat was because he knew, he heard through the grapevine that this boat was just going to go explore new seas and, and find uncharted land. And he knew he was searching for something. So that ship, the Beagle, actually would be responsible for discovering what's called the Galapagos Islands. I don't know how many Darwin fans are, but you see where this is going. So here's what's interesting is the captain actually saw Darwin and didn't like the way he looked. He didn't like his features. And he thought to himself, this dude's going to be on my boat for like months and years. I don't like this guy. I'm not letting him on. So Charles Darwin, faced with that rejection, decided to persuade the guy, not quit, and spend days persuading the guy to let him on his ship. So Darwin pressed on to win, win him over and welcome the origin of species, right? I don't know if you know the story, but Darwin went to the Galapagos Island, and he was the first person to notice that there were, there were similar species living on that island from other islands that that had like the same bird, but they had adapted, right? So he created the origin of species and, oh my God, this whole thing, the religious right came up, you know, because this threatened the book of Genesis and everything, all because he wanted to get on that boat. He had no idea about the Galapagos Islands. So sweet. So my close is this. Hmm, right? Hmm. Do you have any ideas that you're letting die in your mind because you think it's unacceptable or silly. That's why I started off by saying, do you have your own way of doing things in your mind, right? And do you have ideas in your mind or desires and facing challenges and all these things that we talk about and you're not following through with them because you think it's not the right time or it's unacceptable or silly. So this is another reason, by the way, a very, very strong motivator, why I allow everyone, especially all of my, my listeners, um, anybody that meets me, as preposterous as some of your ideas might sound as mine, um, I let everyone have their opinion and I listen to them. I listen to their pitch. I never close off listening to somebody unless they're insinuating harm. So why is that? Well, just like this podcast and me streaming live, it's super uncomfortable and outside of the comfort zone. Whether it's right or wrong, it's growth. I, I deliberately, every day, it's the reason why I work out. It's the reason why I don't eat crap. I want all that stuff. I want to not work out and eat crap. That's what I want. Can't control that. That's how I'm wired. But I don't do it. I practice voluntary discomfort because it's where growth takes place. And I, and this is part of my affirmation, I am a growth-seeking engine. And I remain uncomfortable and open. And that's how I fuel my engine. I fuel my growth engine with discomfort. So it's interesting to think about all this stuff and look at our perceptions, reactions, decisions as the things that create the turning points and the, via the butterfly effect, the footprint of impact that you will leave on this planet and potentially affect millions of people. So there's my podcast today. Um, welcome back to me, um, the butterfly effect. It's happening right now. And you flap your rings the, wings the right way today and everything, the course of your future and potentially the future of millions and your footprint changes forever. I love and appreciate you. Excited to be back. A lot of fun things coming up. Have a wonderful day. Mm -hmm.